So friends, let's start with today's lovely recipe of chicken stew. Let's go through the ingredients. So here I've taken about 150 grams of chicken cut into cubes, one cup of chicken stock, one cup of thick coconut milk, one medium sized onion chopped, one medium sized tomato chopped, one carrot chopped, eight to ten French beans chopped, 
वन लाइट ग्रीन चिली स्लिट वन मीडियम साइज पटेटो पील्ड एंड चॉप्ड अबाउट हाफ अ कप ऑफ ग्रीन पीस वन टी स्पून ऑफ जिंजर एंड गार्लिक पेस्ट हाफ अ इंच ऑफ सिनेम फोर क्लोव एंड वन कार्डम और इलायची वन फोर्थ टी स्पून ऑफ हल्दी वन टी स्पून ऑफ कोरियाडर पाउडर हाफ अ टी स्पून ऑफ पेपर पाउडर वन फोर्थ टी स्पून ऑफ क्यूमिन सम सॉल्ट टू टेस्ट Now here in a pan, I've taken about a tablespoon of oil. Once the oil is hot, I'm going to add the whole spices, that is the cinnamon, the cardamom, and the cloves, and I'm going to just fry them a bit so that they flavor the oil. Next, I will add in my chopped up onion. Now we're going to fry the onion till it's nice and translucent. I'm also going to add the green chili, which I've just slit in the middle, and that also will flavor the oil and add a nice spice to it. So just fry the chili well. Now I'm going to add my ginger garlic paste. Now if you're making the paste at home, then use half an inch of ginger and about four cloves of garlic, and make it a nice fine paste. Now we're going to fry all of this really, really well. Next, I'm going to add my chicken cubes to the bagar, and I'm going to fry the chicken just a little bit in this bagar. Next, I'm going to add the haldi powder or the turmeric powder. Give it a mix. This will add a lovely flavor as well as give a lovely color to this stew. Next, I'm going to add the tomato, and I'm going to fry the tomato till it becomes nice and soft. Next, I'm going to add the coriander powder, the cumin powder, as well as the pepper powder. Now, to make all these powders, what I do is I, you know, uh, roast them, dry roast these powders, and grind them to a nice fine powder. Now, I've dra uh, drained the water from the potatoes that I peeled and chopped, and I've added the cubed up potatoes also to this. bagar next i'm going to add the carrots and the french beans and i'm going to saute all of this really really well now when you fry all of this well you know the it really flavors the stew and you get an amazing delicious stew now i'm going to cover and cook this for 3 minutes next i'm going to add the peas mix it up well and again cover it and cook it for about another 3 minutes We want everything to really come together really well and you know taste really delicious. So again I'm going to mix everything. Now we're cooking on a medium flame. Doesn't it look lovely all the lovely veggies in this too? Now I'm going to season it with some salt to taste. Just a tip over here: always add less salt first, and then later on, after you taste it, you can always add more. Again, fry all of this really well, so you get to eat, you know, your veggies. You get to eat some meat, protein. This stew is really, really amazing, and it's so quick to prepare. What you can do is you can just chop up all your veggies and keep it aside, and when you're ready to make the stew, just get everything together. So now we're going to again cover and cook for another two minutes. So just fry everything nice and well. and you can check now that your chicken uh, pieces are nice and cooked you can just you know uh, with your spoon or a uh, spatula just break up the chicken and it should be cooked by now now we're going to add the chicken stock and we're going to mix it well now you can make the chicken stock by actually boiling some chicken or meat and then extracting the stock or the shortcut is you just take some hot water in a cup one cup of water and add about two or three you know soup cubes and your stock is all ready now let the mixture come to a nice boil so you can use the chicken maggi cubes or the chicken soup cubes just put them in some hot water and that's your stock so that's a real shortcut method to get some lovely stock Now I'm going to add my thick coconut milk. Again over here you can actually you know grind the coconut and extract the milk or just take one cup of hot water and add about 
uh, four or five tablespoons of ready-made coconut milk powder and your coconut milk is also ready and that's it friends all our ingredients are done with now we just have to stir this mixture and let the mixture come to a nice gentle boil on a low to medium flame and once the mixture comes to a boil we're just going to stir it and then we're just going to cover and cook it and simmer it for another five minutes and our stew is all ready now you can have the stew with appams you can have it with some rice but my favorite is to have this with some pao you know you just dip the pieces of pao in this amazing stew and soak up all this lovely gravy and you know it's just mind-blowing and amazing so i hope you give this recipe a try guys and let me know in the see today's lovely goan poes with not a single drop of oil used in this recipe so i've taken exactly one cup of rice in a bowl and i'm going to wash this rice thrice under running water i'm just showing it to you so squeeze out all you know squeeze the rice under the water and first it will come very murky like this and as you continue doing it the water will become more clearer and after you washed it nicely thrice under water you're just going to cover and set it aside for 8 hours you can keep it overnight too but 8 hours would be sufficient so after 8 hours i've drained out all the water from the rice now besides that we're going to use 1 cup of freshly grated coconut try to use you know fresh coconut the taste is really better 2 tablespoons of sugar or you can adjust it according to your sweetness and salt to taste now here i've got a large mixer jar and i'm just going to transfer the rice the coconut the sugar and the salt to my mixer jar now poe is uh, mostly made you know for breakfast you can have it all by itself or you can have it with a nice coconut chutney i leave a link to my coconut chutney recipe down or you can even have it with gravies like sorbatel vindaru chicken curry shakuti you know it's like a kind of a dosa or a neer dosa and it's very versatile you can have it with anything even all by itself it's so nice and delicious and now i'm just going to add a little water at a time totally i've used about half cup of water and we want to get this typical uh, runny kind of a batter very similar to a ghee dosa batter a little thinner than a regular dosa batter now i've kept my iron pan heating on a low to medium flame for at least 10 to 15 minutes this is very important that your pan is nice and heated up and then you're just going to pour about two ladlefuls now you're not going to spread it out too much like a dosa just a little bit so you get that nice round shape don't spread it out too much and then you're just going to cover it and keep it on a medium flame for about half a minute and you'll see that it you know you tend to get these little bit of pores and bubbles all over and then with your a spatula very very gently just loosen up the sides you have to be extremely gentle otherwise it will break but if your pan is nice and heavy i mean nice and hot rather you know it loosens up very very easily now if you want to know about this pan you can check it out in my amazon store i've lead i'll uh, it's in my cooking section so you can get your hands on this i use it for my dosas for my ghavans for everything and it comes out really amazing now we're going to cook the other side also for about half a minute and then you're just going to transfer this to your serving plate and in this way you can make all the dosas i mean the poes and uh, with this one cup of rice i got exactly eight poes poes and uh, these are medium size i haven't made them very small or i haven't made them very large i remember my mom used to make this for us uh you know for breakfast 
and just these with a cup of tea is a nice filling breakfast although i personally like it with a little bit of coconut chutney at the side so the trick is to have a nice heavy bottomed iron pan like this and to really heat it up well and you're all set so i hope you do give this goan poes recipe a try let me know in the comment section how you like this recipe go and check out all my other recipes which i'll uh, you know i'll leave the link to all of them in the description box below as well as the comment section below so you can go and click on them and just go directly to the recipe you're looking for so here they are they're so light and so nice and not a single drop of oil used in this recipe so it's so healthy too Now for our chocolate barfi we are first going to make the condensed milk here i'm using 20 grams of milk powder you get these small milk packets milk powder packets you can use that Now I'm going to add just one tablespoon of butter, but the butter should be at room temperature. It shouldn't be frozen. Now I'm going to add one tablespoon of powdered sugar and two tablespoons of warm water, warm to hot water, and we're going to blend this, and we get our lovely condensed milk. we just require this much quantity for our chocolate barfi now i've set up a double boiler it's nothing but just a vessel filled with water and a micro safe micro proof uh vessel a glass bowl preferably i'm using 400 grams of dark chocolate so we're going to melt this chocolate see that your glass bowl fits perfectly into the vessel now i've also lined a cake tin with parchment or baking paper and if you can get your hands on a cake tin which has a removable base there's nothing like it it's easier to work with the barfi then 
and just use some parchment paper or baking paper to line it it just makes it easier to take the barfi out now i'm i've added about 1 taste tablespoon of butter to my chocolate this helps the chocolate to melt faster and it also gives it a lovely glaze or a shine now i'm adding exactly half the quantity of the condensed milk that i have made if you're buying the store bought condensed milk just use 50 grams that's about 2 tablespoons heap tablespoons of the condensed milk now keep stirring it use a either a silicon spoon or a wooden spoon be extremely careful ensure that your vessel which is uh, you know supporting the glass bowl is very sturdy so have a heavy bottomed steel vessel up below the glass bowl it makes it easier to work with and keep stirring till it becomes a nice smooth paste Now once your mixture is completely melted you can turn off the gas heat and immediately we're going to pour this into our lined cake tin please be extremely careful because the mixture is very very hot take the help of somebody to pour the mixture if you're not very confident the first time and then you're just going to chill this in a refrigerator for 10 to 15 minutes so our base is nice and ready now the same in the same way we are going to melt our white chocolate but we are going to use exactly half the quantity of our white chocolate compound just 200 grams and we are going to melt it the same way now i haven't added butter to the white chocolate but if you want a nice shiny glaze to the white chocolate you can add just a little bit of butter maybe half a tablespoon now add the remaining condensed milk to the mixture again one tablespoon of ready made condensed milk if you are using it that just adds a little bit of sweetness to the fudge or the chocolate or the barfi and i've also kept some almonds which i have cut very very fine to garnish our barfi with well you can go and check out my channel i have so many sweet recipes dessert recipes which you can try this diwali i have some walnut chocolate fudge i have something called gova cheese you can try out that it's pure veg and now immediately once our chocolate has melted we're just going to pour the white chocolate over the dark chocolate which is a little bit set now since we've kept the dark chocolate to chill in the refrigerator please be extremely careful the chocolate is very very hot and now all we have to do is just garnish it with the chopped up almonds you can use whatever dry fruits or nuts you like you can be very creative and make it look really beautiful and now all that's left is again to put this into the refrigerator to set now for another 30 minutes at least yes you have to have a lot of patience and now after 30 minutes of waiting anxiously for the barfi to set here it is and now you know when you have this removable base baking tin it's very easy it just comes out easily then all you have to do is just take out the baking paper or the parchment paper and this just chop it up into even sized squares now i like to keep it squares because barfi normally comes in squares but if you want to give it the you know the diamond shape look you can do that you can be creative with however you like it if you are going to be uh, making some different patterns or different shapes and garnishes i would love to see the pictures you could post them on my facebook page i have a facebook page under the name of akshita's recipes 
you can go to my main page of akshita's recipes and you will find the link to my facebook please post your pictures there guys i would love to see how creative you have been with this chocolate barfi so there it is doesn't it look delicious and it tastes just yummy guys so please 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 try this recipe and let me know in the comments box below how you liked it